It is now the time to enroll in LRP. USA's Livestock Risk Protection Program, often called LRP, has undergone significant changes. Uh, it's a much better program than it was a year ago, which was better than it was two years ago. Because of all those changes, a lot of producers are trying to understand the program and learn how it works. Today, the number one question we receive is, is now the time to enroll? People are asking that question because of the way the markets have been moving. They've been trending upwards, they're in positive territory. We have stronger prices than we've had for some period of time. And intuitively, people say, hey, I want to utilize LRP when the prices are high. So we tried to put some numbers down. We wanted to do some real analysis. Now, I'm not gonna answer the question, is now the time to enroll in LRP? But what I can do is provide you some one of a kind information, some data that you haven't seen before that certainly creates a, a clearer picture regarding how LRP is gonna work. I'm gonna look at three scenarios, two for feeder cattle, one for fed cattle. Feeder cattle, I'm gonna look at a short-term coverage option, so around four months or 17 weeks, and then I'm gonna look at 34 weeks. So kind of a shorter term and a longer term coverage. And we're gonna do this separating out the results. In other words, how would this exact policy under today's rules have performed historically using numbers clear back to 2007 up to uh, about last year. And so we're using real numbers here, kind of some random samples, and we're gonna answer the question, how would LRP have performed based upon different price thresholds? So let's start with a, a shorter term. Let's go at 800 pound steer. We're gonna look at two key figures. One, how frequently does the cost or the premium, I should say the indemnity, which is how much LRP pays you, how often does that exceed the cost? In a, on a net basis. So in other words, after the LRP contract is done, how often am I ahead after my premium is covered? And I like this because it, it creates a clear picture that I think is important to have going into LRP, understanding that, look, LRP only pays when the price falls. And even when the price is high, it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to fall. But I think you're going to find these numbers interesting. So, so the first one, we're going to insure 17 weeks ahead. And we're gonna do no threshold. In other words, just you randomly insure, you do not care what the price is, whatever that you know expected price is, you lock it in. 38% of the time, you can kind of look at this chart, 38% of the time, the indemnity or what it paid you surpassed the premium, what you had to pay. Now let's put in a $150 threshold, okay? And if you're trying to think of what that means, that this is right off the feeder cattle futures. These numbers are right off the board because we're doing an 800 pound steer. The number goes from 38 to 54. Now, oddly, when we put a 155 threshold on using these random samples, the number goes back down just a little bit to 148. But it gives you a pretty clear picture that when you, when you do see an increase in price uh, above just the standard, you know, not having a threshold, it does slightly increase the, the frequency of when the indemnity surpasses the premium. Now let's talk net dollars. In other words, after we pay a premium, uh, and I'm gonna use 800 pound animal, after we pay a premium and we're paid an indemnity, and you take all of these random events together, in other words, you know, maybe 100 or so different samples that we're looking at, we aggregate them together. What is the net? Are we ahead by using LRP because we cut out those bad years or not? And here's the numbers again. When we don't, you, we don't use a threshold, it's still a good deal. Even when the price is low, LRP over time is still a good deal. We're $13 ahead uh, in that case. Now let's put in that $150 threshold. We add the $150 threshold, we're up to 30. So we doubled our net indemnity. We go 155 and we're at $39. So you see a pretty clear pattern. You didn't quite see that same uh, pattern when we looked at frequency of payment, but when you look at the net level of payment, you do see some increases there the higher you go. Okay, now let's, now let's look at the same coverage, 800 pound steer. Again, and, and the, the thing I should focus on, we're ensuring the highest coverages here. So between 97 and 100% of the expected price under every example I'm gonna run today. Okay, now we're 34 weeks out. The numbers are interesting. So now let's see percent of events when the indemnity surpasses the premium. When we don't have a threshold, it's 39%. We add a little different threshold, 145 in this case, we're at 57. $150, we're again at 57. Uh, oddly, and it's, it's kind of consistent with the last one, when we go up to 155, we actually drop just a little bit to a 
uh, event. So again, you did see a little correlation, uh, but certainly it didn't, the higher you went in, in, in a minimum threshold, in other words, you only insured when that expected price was above 150 or 155, you did not continue to see the frequency of payment increase. So now let's take a step back and let's look at net indemnity. In other words, once we aggregate all these random samples, 100 or whatever they are, and, and, and the amount of samples varies, right? Because there's a lot more samples that we can pull from when we don't have a minimum threshold than when we do. So 34 weeks, uh, no threshold, $15.66. Uh, is, is the net indemnity. So again, we're happy, we're, we're ahead if we do it enough. Uh, we go a 145 threshold, uh, that skyrockets up to $43 ahead. Uh, we use a 150 threshold up to $49, and a 155, uh, we stay at 49, uh, $49. So what you see is that maybe a 150 threshold is, is a rule of thumb, has historically performed a little better. But it's also important to note that it performed well with no threshold as well. But today's market, we're above 150. Uh, what this shows us is that historically, at least, when we had a threshold, uh, which would be where the market is today, it, LRP has performed exceptionally well. Now, fed cattle, uh, this is the equivalent of a live cattle futures uh, weight. These are, these are finishing, these are fats, whatever you wanna call them. If your agent hasn't run you through the numbers on those, you, you should call because uh, we've got some very interesting numbers. Fed cattle historically has not performed as well as feeder cattle. But the question is, just because it hasn't performed as well, what about now? What about with today's prices? And I think you're going to find these numbers fascinating. So first of all, let's look at percent of events, okay, the frequency. With no threshold in the Fed category, we're talking 26% of the time. Uh, the indemnity exceed the premium. You go to dollar five, you're at 30, 30 percent. Dollar 15, 35 percent. Dollar 25, you stay at 35, and then a dollar 30, dollar uh, 30, you do see a little increase. So here, you you do see a slight increase, uh, or or at least not a decrease at every uh, increment, every threshold that you're using. Now let's look at net. Net here, and this is, this is, this is something that, that's, that's noteworthy and I think USGA needs to take a serious look at in the future. If you don't have a threshold, you lost $4 a hundredweight historically. When you take all these random samples, you did not come ahead. You put a $1.05 threshold on there, now you're about three fifty-seven dollars ahead. So you're ahead, it's positive, not super positive, but, it, but it's good, it's better than, better than, better than not. Uh, now we look at a one fifteen threshold though, now we're at $9.43. Let's jump that up to 125, you're at 12. And now here we're at this, this, this place where the market is uh, today, at least for certain months. We are at a 130 threshold, and that is a $27 roughly net indemnity. So there's a strong correlation for Fed between the level of, the, the, the level of coverage, the threshold that you can insure at. So what are the take home? Well, the take home is this. LRP, especially for feeder cattle, it's a risk management tool. The price can go down even when it starts low. But if you want to look for using some random samples, uh, using the best information that, that I, I'm confident the best information you're going to find anywhere, there does appear to be a correlation, especially when you start looking at that net indemnity per head between ensuring when the market is a little stronger and when it's a little weaker. If you have any questions, you know, I only ran through a handful of scenarios. would love to run through scenarios that are specific to your operation. Uh, if you are finishing out cattle, I'd love to talk about that. One of the programs that, that I'm going to have a video on pretty soon that nobody talks about and they're missing out because we've ran the numbers is USA's livestock gross margin for cattle. If your agent has just talked to you about LRP and you're somebody who finishes cattle, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your bottom line to look at LGM as well. LGM has some advantages. It's a little more complex, but I think we can break it down to where you can understand it. Hey, thanks for taking time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe. Uh, if you have questions, get, pick up the phone and call us. That's the quickest way to get a response. You can send an email or you can put a comment in the comment section. Have a great day.